I'm Cherie with Technomadia and as you know we bought a boat about a year ago as total boating newbies we used to have an inflatable kayak that's about it and we knew that we were going to need help to get started with boating it's not as easy as just buying an RV firing it up and going there's a lot of stuff you need to know so we were introduced to Captain Chris and Elise um, and we're blessed with being able to go to some of their classroom training classes and got their DVD series and followed a lot of their videos and we fully intended to hire them as training captains but the scheduling just didn't work out to make that happen. They were busy and we got to a slip where we had to learn to drive it to do a pump out so <laughs> <laughs> like we had immediate need so we, we hired a trainer over there and, and got comfortable with what we were doing. But we're getting a lot of questions from folks watching our videos about what does a boating newbie need to be trained up on and I thought no better than to talk with these guys so I, you guys deal with boating newbies all the time so um, you're going to ask Captain Chris so you ask <laughs> Captain Chris so okay before he answers you the other part about it that I'd like to make sure everybody understands is that when we first met you that was not your first foray into exploring information about boating you read you went to other events and such and you came the very first time that we met you that I recall was at a Loopapalooza right. over on the west coast of Florida where there were some already boaters and many uh, wannabes mm -hmm. uh, not even newbies yet they're just wannabes as that's where you were at that point in time mm -hmm. researching so there's a lot of ways that you can look for this information obviously YouTube Facebook magazines um, clubs right, right. Today, we're, at the, we're at the MTOA rendezvous and getting together with, with a lot of people who have already done some of this for a while is a great resource for you. Um, obviously, as with anything that you want to learn, you want to make sure that the people who are teaching you or who you're learning from are teaching correctly, <laughs> are giving you the right information. So you have to be a little bit careful to make sure about that if you're going to learn you can learn a lot of stuff on YouTube but you want to make sure that right. it's the right information right. that you're learning um, so ask Captain Chris we also have a, a YouTube channel but it's free it's super easy for everyone to um, look at and learn a variety of different things from docking to anchoring to engine work to just all the time Chris has got his camera with him so that he can see what somebody's doing. There I had you go. to take There's it away from my <laughs> Focus, focus, yes. Because there's, there's all kinds of opportunities. I say it all the time. Sometimes you watch the show and sometimes you are the show. And you want to be comfortable when it's your turn to be the one that everybody's watching. Practice. Practice, practice, practice with anything that you do. Practice is super important. So, how do you practice if you don't know from the first place and that's where we think um, hiring somebody that's a professional captain who's really good and has the patience to be with training. you. Don't just hire a professional captain. Some are delivery style. Exclusively delivery style And they're captains. awesome at driving right. their boat. But they have no patience for teaching newbies who mm -hmm. might need a training aspect. So right. Seek out a training captain right. and they are there's a lot of them out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, let me give you an idea of who we are and where we came from. I'm from New Orleans and we moved aboard our 44 foot boat with two dogs, two Labradors, and we've lived aboard and cruised aboard that 44 foot boat for 19 years full time. Elise is a Jersey girl coming to New Orleans and we've done a lot of cruising and traveling aboard our 44 foot boat. And I keep on saying 44, I mean it's not a giant boat but it was our home. It was our only home. We did not own a car. We did not <laughs> own any real estate. We owned the boat. And we cruised from New Orleans all around the Gulf, through the Keys, the Bahamas, up and down the Atlantic coast. Spent a lot of time in Baltimore, Martha's Vineyard, going up into the Great Lakes, the Erie Canal. So we've been around a lot of different places. And now what we're offering through our trademark name is Ask Captain Chris, and we can offer to you free YouTube videos like you talked about, Facebook, and we also have DVDs that we actually edited. So <laughs> it's a lot cleaner film that's uh, more pertinent and to the point. And then we teach two day classes in Vero Beach, Florida. We're near Vero right now, we're in Fort Pierce. 
But our two-day classes, we have one called Cruising 101, The Fundamentals. And you may have seen when you all were in that class and Chris was demonstrating... That Chris. That Chris, right. The one behind the camera was demonstrating the life jacket and his ponytail went flying up. That was so fun to look at. But and the focus is on not just fundamentals, it's fun, fun. the mentals. Yes. And what we it's like about class, these guys yeah. is they take boating seriously in the safety aspects Absolutely. and the maintenance but also focusing on that cruising is supposed to also be about fun when it's a lifestyle. We're not going out there to be professional captains. We're, we're not going to be right. navigating commercial vessels. Absolutely. We're not going to be going and out intentionally in bad weather. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A schedule. And, and don't, go. Know, yeah. don't go. A schedule is a very dangerous thing to have on a boat. If the weather was beautiful and you planned on going out on Tuesday, well then go out on Tuesday. If Tuesday comes and the weather is very windy and it's not comfortable leaving your dock, then don't. Take the dinghy out, right? Uh -huh. And then go out on the paddle board. Do that right. sort of thing. We started, well, I started as a weekend boater as a you know uh, whatever he told me to do I could do because he's had his license since he's 18 years old we all didn't start that way many of us have never owned a boat before right <laughs> <laughs> and an inflatable kayak <laughs> <laughs> and look at what they're able to handle now. It's amazing. We haven't sunk it yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Despite Irma, right? Despite Irma, you haven't. The next thing to think about, everybody's looking on the internet, looking at uh, yachtworlds.com, looking at all these boats that are in their budgets. But you also need to think about twin engine or single engine, bow thruster or bow and stern thruster, the cabin layout, the deck layout. What do you want to do with the boat, right? How fast or how slow, how big or how small of the horsepower for the engines. And we offer our second class also in Vero Beach called Introduction to Boat Systems. And that class is a little bit different. It's aimed towards the boat owner to teach them how to do maintenance aboard their boat. I'm not talking about pulling the head off of an engine and changing the pistons. But checking the oil. <laughs> checking the oil, changing the oil, mm -hmm. changing the dirty fuel filter. What's a sump pump? Sump pump for the shower. <laughs> uh, all of What's these simple things. What's an impeller that everybody talks about? Uh -huh. You know, how do you change it? Right. So you don't need to be a mechanic. You guys came from a world where you did a lot of the maintenance on your bus. but. Systems are different on systems, a boat. Systems are different on a boat, and many people don't even do their own oil change on their car. So how am I going to be able to learn how to do that in a boat? Well, you don't have to, but it's a whole lot more fun when you know what you're looking at, when you can prevent there from being a problem, and when you decide, you know what, this is beyond my pay grade. I will pay somebody else to do this, and I appreciate the work that has to be done and why I'm paying somebody else to do it. You're not completely um, clueless. Exactly, exactly. And you know that you're when you're hiring somebody that they know what they're talking about, because at least you're familiar with the terms and the parts of your engine. Yeah that are going into it. So, when, when but you've I, got to wait for the guy to arrive. Yeah. Let, let's give a scenario. Let's say it's on a Friday afternoon, it's summer, you've got guests coming out and your air conditioner quits. And the little code on the air conditioner LED LCD display says high P5, H-I-P5. Well, what does that mean? And it's not in the book. Well, it might the not be five, in the book if you buy a used boat that doesn't have a book. Well, you cannot equipment. find it on the internet either. <laughs> the five is actually an S, and that means high pressure. And the reason that the unit failed because of high pressure is the water pump stopped pumping water to cool off the Freon and the air conditioning compressor. So, if you ask Captain Chris, I can tell you to go clean the sea strainer on the water pump for the air conditioner and you'll be back in business in five it minutes. Works. <laughs> you don't have to wait for the guy to come on Monday and, and clean the strainer for you. And, yeah, and you think and I charge you two done hours that. minimum. I could have done that, right? Yes. It's not so it's that the basic troubleshooting, the things to look at first, because it's more than likely going to be something common, right? Right. So start there. And sure. another, Chris, you, you, you talked about it being for the boat owner. Even for before you own the boat, before you buy the boat, you can start looking at boats with a little bit more knowledge. 
instead of just saying, wow, this looks beautiful or the layout is great, you can get into the below deck systems and start saying, well, this looks like it's in good condition or, oh, this, <laughs> uh, this, this tubing is looking a little crazy. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. And and that, that helps you for your negotiations as well mm -hmm. as helps you to realize, no, 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 walk away. Yes. <laughs> walk away from that boat. And Knowledge is power, yes. especially in the shopping process and your learning process. Absolutely. So a question that we keep getting is, are we going to get our captain's license? Do or do you need, you need a, captain's a captain's license? license? I mean, we have no intention to. <laughs> well, you do not need a captain's license. And I will tell you that um, there's uh, many schools of thoughts out there. Personally, we both do have our captain's license. Chris has had his since he's 18 years old. I got mine when I was 40 something. And I got it because we drove water taxis up in Baltimore Harbor. That was one of our odd jobs we picked up along the way. And I did some deliveries before we actually started this business. But do you have to have a license? Absolutely not. You should have some foundations. You should have good navigation skills. You should have, and that's something you can learn in a classroom. You can learn it from people like us, or you can go to your power squadron, you can go to the Coast Guard Auxiliary. You can go online. If you're that motivated a learner, you can sit down and take classes online. It's not difficult to learn this information, but there's some basic things just to be a safe boater. We believe strongly in safety first, the fun comes after. and. Um, having your captain's license is a lot more difficult not just because you have to pass a variety of different tests for it but you also have to have time on the water in the type of boat for the size license that you're going to uh, aspire to right. to get and that time on the water is a lot of time and it's not something that a boating newbie is going to be able to accumulate Minimally 350 days on the water. At four hours per day, minimum. Yes, yes. So that's not something that a boating newbie is going to get. Like our friend, our mutual friend, Sean and Louise, who have been on their boat, Vector, for five years full time, he just crossed that threshold to even contemplate. So it's not something you're going to go out and get a captain's license first, unless you have a lot of boating experience. Or if you're going to use it commercially. And commercially, mm -hmm. but if you're just setting out to cruise personally, recreationally. Don't need it. Don't you need don't it. need it. I will tell you that before I got my captain's license, Chris had his, and the first big boat that we got, our insurance company still wanted both of us to take a power squadron course <laughs> before they would give us the approval for the, you know, for the insurance right. and a discount on it. They didn't care that he had his, his right. commercials, hundred ton. Right. They didn't care. Right. So that's another training opportunity, mm -hmm. something that people should pursue. Yes. Power squadron offered yes. by the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's four power boats. A lot of people hear about uh, the ASA classes for sailors. That's kind of the most equivalent that we have for power boats. But power squadron. Well, they have a recreational power boat, I forget the rest of it, the RP Boaters Association, okay. which is the sailing association power boat version. They do have that. Okay. But they're more into sailboats than they are into right. power boats. There's which, so many different ways to learn. You have to you have to be self-aware on how you learn and then pursue it that way you can learn on weekend courses you can learn online you can learn a lot of information you can learn reading in advance of purchasing your boat so that you start to understand what it is that you need to know and what it is that you're deficient in or that you already are good with because maybe you did grow up around boats mm -hmm. if you're fortunate enough to have a, a nice mentor growing up that, that taught you properly that's the other thing <laughs> sometimes those mentors teach you the fun part but not always the the right way to do something because truly and honestly there's so much technology out there now that makes it easier but the fundamentals still should be there right you should still have a good foundation speaking of fundamentals another service that we offer is training aboard your boat mm -hmm. wherever your boat is uh, I'm going to Norfolk Virginia in two weeks to work up there then I'm going to land between the lakes near Paducah, Kentucky, Georgetown, South Carolina, Panama City, Florida. So we travel, but the other things that we can help you with is before you buy the boat and after you buy the boat. And we're sitting here on a 47-foot boat in Fort Pierce, Florida. Your boat draws three and a half or four feet of water, mm -hmm. and the water's five feet deep right now. The tide is rising. So our neighbor over here to my right, to the port side of the boat, he's got a 47-foot boat that draws five feet of water. And we just had another boater leave the rendezvous 
shout out to him that the water's five feet deep right now. That was maybe 20 minutes ago. He's waiting for the high tide to fully rise before he pushes on. So that's part of your buying process. Do you want to buy a five foot draft boat? Do you want to buy a six foot draft boat? Where do you plan to go? Mm -hmm. And maybe your boat's three and a half feet, or if you've got a shorter boat in a 32 foot neighborhood, it might only be two and a half feet. So all that's part of the buying process. And then the height of the boat too. You guys were planning on doing the Great Loop eventually, um, and you need to have a certain height, no more than 19 foot so and so inches, but sometimes boats can hinge. Mm -hmm. You can. So we bought this one specifically with a hydraulic arch. It's 18 and a half with the arch up and all of the, uh, well, the, the antennas, antennas and stuff up. Mm -hmm. But because we want to do the Western Erie, the historic part, there's actually parts that are 15 and a half feet. So yes. this one can get down to a 12 foot bridge clearance. Mm -hmm. But Beautiful. these were things that we researched in advance. Mm -hmm. Um, we didn't just go out and buy a boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and another piece of it too is your boat can go a little bit faster than the average trawler. Mm -hmm. Then there are other trawler types that can go even faster than that. They can get up. What's your, what's your top speed? We can do about 18. Oh wow, you really can run fast. <laughs> if you want to throw enough fuel out the back. I was going to say, yeah. throwing $20 yeah, yeah, yeah. I might as well just right. like just right. get a, a fuel nozzle but, and just. <laughs> but that's that's an important aspect also. If you're going to spend time on your boat. Do you have more more money than time or more time than money? You know, you have right. to think about that. Are you only going to use it for the weekend? Do you only have that short time to hurry out to an island and back again before mm -hmm. you start work on Monday? Or are you going to go for the long haul? Right. And the most, the, 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 I guess one of the funniest things I've heard somebody learn from us is um, a long time ago, we don't do this anymore, but we used to charter our boat and it's a full displacement trawler top speed eight knots and burns twice the fuel as when we're doing six and a half. So we ran it at six and a half all the time. He said he learned so much. It was a great week that he spent with us, blah, blah, blah. But what he learned is that if he had to do six and a half, seven knots all day long, he'd slit his wrists. And, and we've said, learned if we can do six and a half knots all day long, we're awesome. There you go. <laughs> we love it. So that's <laughs> money in the bank. So oh, that's and it's the, peaceful and quiet and absolutely, serene. <laughs> absolutely. And obviously, we had our boat for 19 years. We love that too. Yeah. But it's good, again, that's another self-aware thing. It's very good for you to understand what is it that brings you joy. Right. This is supposed to be pleasure boating. This is supposed to be having fun. It's not, well, for some people, having fun is doing a check off. You know, getting that bucket mm -hmm. list checked off. Whatever it is that brings you joy, you have to understand that and then work around that for the type of boat that you're looking for, which brings all other questions into play then too. Right. If it's only if it's only a fast boat or if it's only a slow boat, or if it's a boat that can do both fast and slow or a boat that will not ever do the great loop, it doesn't need to be a shorter boat, mm -hmm. or if it's a boat that you don't you have time to wait, like our neighbors, they have time to wait to go wait out for the tide. Wait for the tide. So Or they can wait on the sandbar. Yeah, either <laughs> one. <laughs> and that's the other thing. You hear people talk about running aground. Well, there's boats that have run aground, boaters that have run aground, or there's boaters that will. <laughs> that will. And, and the rest of them are lying because, because it happens. It happens to all of us. Even as you saw coming in to this marina, very experienced boaters, we're if running it's around not open. well marked, if the channel or is well not communicated by the mm -hmm. marina, they're still mm -hmm. learning what their challenges are getting into here. Right. It's a brand new marina. Right. So yeah, well, there's a lot to learn. Oh, um, other things. You haven't been to the Bahamas yet. No. Nope. You spent the season in the Florida Keys, and that was terrific, other than the hurricane. <laughs> yeah, a little minor thing. <laughs> but the Bahamas are just 54 miles over there. So you can go from Palm Beach, Florida, 54 miles at 100 degrees magnetic, almost due east, and you'll be in a foreign country. Crystal clear waters, conks, starfish, fishing. But you don't just Snorkeling. take off. You watch the weather for the right window to go. Right. <laughs> True. You have to wait for the right weather, and, and we can teach you all of that, too. And you don't just start out buying the boat and going to the Bahamas. You well, get you could. You <laughs> most people, most people who successfully do those kind of things, 
start out slow and do practice runs. Mm -hmm. They take the boat from here around the corner into Faber Cove and spend the night at anchor for their first night at anchor. Mm -hmm. They go down to Palm Beach and go from marina to marina because maybe they're not comfortable anchoring at first. Or they're they, learning how to dock at different marinas because that's a whole different challenge. Yes. <laughs> yes. At different marinas, this marina's fixed docks. Mm -hmm. And then a docks. marina behind us is floating docks, a marina in front of us is floating docks. That means as the tide comes in and out, up and down, the docks will float up and down. Which changes the way you tie your boat. That's one skill. Mm -hmm. And then the other skill is the fixed dock. So those are just things that will come with time that you've got Absolutely. to learn. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us there. If you want to learn more about boating, ask Captain Chris. <laughs> Go onto the YouTube channel, check out their website, and we highly recommend their classes in person. We we enjoyed all four days. We did both the classes he talked about. And we'd love to do some on water one time allows. <laughs> all right. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.